Hi guys, SoDubs here and today I'm doing a video review on the CAT S62 Pro. Now this rugged smartphone can be found for around £600 in the UK, around €650 Euros in, well, Europe, and $750 in the US. Now if you're interested in purchasing this phone, the locally link in the description below will take you to your localised Amazon store and be sure to check out CAT's website or Caterpillar's website uh, down below as well. Now in that description box you'll also find a link to my Instagram it'll be also on the screen right now so if you do have Instagram and use it as a platform I'd very much appreciate a follow. So now let's see if this rugged smartphone is actually worth the money and furthermore if it does withstand all the tests I threw at it. So first off a quick look at what you get in the box. It's pretty simple you've got a smartphone with a built-in screen protector and I'll talk about this in just a bit. You've got a USB type A to USB type C um, um, cable and then you've got a regional um, wall adapter which is pretty much um, customary. Now in terms of the smartphone itself the screen protector is off because I did quite a bit of testing you can see it's kind of gone uh, damaged over here and that's because I was dropping tools and dropping on the floor and yes I'll get into that in just a bit but anyway that is that comes pre-applied on the smartphone but you can see I've removed it for mainly aesthetics. Now in terms of the smartphone itself uh, let's talk about the build quality and design first. Now this is a rugged smartphone and there's no denying that because when you first get it you will see that it's a pretty chunky monkey to say the least. It weighs around 248 uh, grams so it's pretty heavy and let's say in comparison to a regular modern day smartphone yes it's going to be a lot less um, well sleek and a little less portable but let's face it that's not the reason you're buying it for the aesthetics it's for its ruggedness and the ruggedness I'm going to get into is in the performance section of this review because obviously that's very important for a lot of people but I just wanted to quickly talk about the design and build quality ignore the scratches and dents over here because that's just from me throwing it around and testing it but essentially on the right hand side you've got a volume rocker you've got a power on and off button over here um, and then you've got also a fingerprint um, a sensor at the back which is actually pretty quick um, to respond as you can see over there uh, and I'm very impressed with that the enrollment process is very easy like any Android device uh, on the left hand side you've got a, um, a, a sim slash uh, micro SD card slot now this supports um, a, a large amount of extra storage if you need it it does come built in with a hundred and twenty eight gigabytes of space now in real world usage that's around hundred gigabytes of space just due to the, the formatting but um, to access this little sim slot over here unlike normal smartphones when you open this you've got access to the sim card you will need a sim card um, a pinhole and to pop it out and it'll um, reveal a dual sim slot now certain phones as far as I'm aware do support only a singular sim and a micro SD card whereas this phone in particular that we've got here most people that will be buying it will have a dual sim capability but if you do get rid of the second sim uh, you can had, have the micro SD card slot in there. Now you'll want to ensure that this um, is properly sealed because um, well this is a waterproof phone it's IP68 and IP69 certified in other words it will take jets of water can be submerged um, and also fully washed so you'll be able to see on your screen right now I had it in my wash basin completely submerged and using soap on it and to just completely clean it. In a times like this where you've got coronavirus and things it's actually quite useful that you have a phone that's fully submerged you know it, it can be fully submerged merged and therefore be completely cleansed and washed um, quite um, thoroughly uh, before being handed down to another employee for example. Now underneath this slot what you'll find is a programmable key. What I love about this is that you can program it to pretty much your heart's content and even via third-party apps. So in my case if I double tap it it opens up the calculator. If I uh, long press it it'll open up the My Fleer Pro app which is great. So this can be customized through the settings and I'll show you this in just a bit but something I just thought of pointing out. Now in terms of the design of the phone it's not obviously the most sleek looking phone but at the back it's actually quite functional because it's got kind of a non fingerprint magnet type of design over here with the cat logo uh, pretty well, pretty bold over there but here is what I like is because it's got kind of like a textured feel and therefore means it's easier to grip specifically if you've got wet hands or you're wearing gloves or something like that it means that the phone's not going to slip out whilst let's say your most modern day smartphones and I know it's got kind of a skin on it will absolutely slip very easily outside your hand so I like what cat I've integrated over here this kind of textured material. What I don't like however is the fact that the camera itself, I'm not sure you'll be able to see it, is slightly protruding in terms of design. Now this will be not an issue if it's in your pocket but the problem is if you put this down on um, a ground or surface over here and you were to use it the phone is going to wobble and therefore it just kind of 
I, I just don't like that and I know a lot of people will be using their phones at their desk or let's say on a building site for example with the phone placed down somewhere and when you're pressing around doing these things it's just it just yeah I just think Cat uh, should have just integrated either the cameras to be a little bit further in or even the design of the phone to be just a little bit further out and then yes it would add to the overall thickness but I think it would prevent this type of issue from occurring but that's my uh, thoughts obviously let me know in the comments below what you think of this slightly protruding camera. Now next up we're going to move on to software and here is where the phone somewhat excels because it's pretty much running stock Android. Now this is going to be enterprise ready so for those people who want to have it kind of locked down for enterprise use and work related use versus personal use you can do that but what I really love about it is the fact that it uses Android 10 and will be upgradable to Android 11 when that comes out and when it's available and furthermore it's a stock kind of theme there's no heavy theming that's been added on top which means that the phone does feel pretty fluid and is pretty much running stock Android now if I just jump into the settings what you'll see is that there's very few customization that have um, occurred over here specifically let's say the programmable key which I showed said that I would show you you've got the PTT mode here if I enable it you can see programmable key is converted to PTT uh, note so therefore it's functioning via requires via third-party app if you disable that you go via double tap for example you can see you've got all the different apps that you can enable obviously the ones which are installed including with the long press and then from here you've pretty much got the default Android settings from the display settings wallpapers your battery life and in terms of that the storage how much you've got free and how much is usable in other words it's pretty much comprehensive it's got everything you want over here and the the phone itself just basically runs exactly as you would um, expect uh, for a stock Android phone and I just really love that fact that uh, cats have integrated that and I've had not put a heavy skin on it which would kind of dampen the overall Android experience for those people kind of switching over to Android potentially for the first time. Now before moving on I just do want to touch upon the MyFlare Pro app. Now the app itself is really well done and I think that what Cat have done over here is just really well thought out and means that even novices can just kind of access the app and just use it and have their core functionalities of having a thermal imaging camera. Now I'm going to touch upon this uh, very shortly but I just kind of want to showcase the app so you can see what I'm what I am seeing and furthermore how easy it is to use. So first off you got the app interface over here it looks very much like a camera app but there is at the top over here a few different options that I want to touch upon first of all you've got this little kind of ruler button this ruler button gives you a range of temperatures and it's showcasing what range of temperatures it can see on screen now you can adjust that by pressing this and adjust the range manually and even change the colors and even set an alarm if you so wish so therefore if it's exceeding or going under that range then you'll get an, a, a notification or a vibration. Here the top button allows you to set the different uh, kind of data points. Now the data points themselves are very handy and what I really love about the data points is the fact that they can be added after the image has been done altogether. Now not only is this quite useful for people who are monitoring stuff and kind of looking at a I don't know the functionality of you know what they're looking in front of them but furthermore the fact that you can edit this afterwards just adds a whole other layer of a customization and one that just really took me by surprise by how easy it is to do and I'll showcase this in just a bit. Now you can also hold it down you can set a min and max range add a little note or let's say delete all of them or delete one of them if you so wish. Now the biggest thing for uh, for, for me uh, specifically when it comes to this thermal imaging camera is that most thermal imaging cameras give you this kind of look. It's kind of blurry, you can't really see what's going on and that's because it's using the singular sensor. The MSX mode uses kind of a mix of the primary sensor and the, the FLIR camera which is great to see and means a little bit easier to see what you can see in front of you. But add it to another layer then you've got the alpha blending mode which makes it as you might be able to see on your screen a lot clearer and a lot easier to see what is on there again I'm going to be touching upon this in just a bit and again you can disable this and furthermore you can even adjust that blend level uh, as well making it 
even more intuitive. So I really like what they've done. Now you can reset the temperatures by pressing that button. So it kind of resets the temperatures as you can see right there. You can enter the uh, settings over here, which basically means that it, it resets the, the, the settings. Uh, you can go through the top over here, go through the general uh, FLIR settings. So if you wanted to enable or disable, let's say a location, you can do that through there. And you can also get some tips and tricks directly from there, even have this enable in terms of the flashlight and over here, let's say the uh, timer to take a picture. So if you want to set it up, for example, on a tripod or something. Now, what I want to show over here is how simple it is. And not only that, also just show you that there's a couple of different modes. You've got photo, video, YouTube live, which can be very useful for those people who are kind of streaming it to a, a, a colleague via YouTube. And you can also set a time lapse. So let's go with photo. And oh yeah, and forgot, I forgot to say another feature is that you've got a few different filters that you can choose from. Not something I would personally use, but it's there for you to, to play around with. And then you've also got this little button over here, which adds the kind of effect. Now let's take a picture and go into the gallery. Now straight away over here, you can see the smartphone, you've got heat points over here. It's quite nice to see. And again, I'm, I'm gonna touch upon this uh, in a lot more detail with some engine shots. But here you can see, if I just scroll up, it gives you the indication of the the original photo and then with it with the thermal imaging camera. Now you're like, okay, this is quite useful, but I want to edit it. Well, you press the little edit button over here. Let's say you want to set a data point. You can do that. Again, this is after having taken the picture and then you can add, let's say a zone. I don't know, let's do, let's do this and then um, do that. And then we can change the temperature range if we want to do, but we're not going to do that. And then we can even set the modes that we just did, the, the picture we did, and just completely reset it and add it to a normal image. Or let's say take it to another level if you wanted, if you didn't want one of those pictures that you took. In other words, you can see all of this is very intuitive. And then when I press save, it saves the image and now I can export that to my PC. The only oversight I found through this functionality is that let's say you had this, well, pretty terrible image right here, and you wanted to share this, but then you also wanted to share the original image. Now, while you might be able to do this on your phone, you can't do that on your computer, as far as I'm aware, without this app. So therefore, what you're gonna have to do is go back to edit, and then let's say, get rid of all these uh, data points, and then change the blending, and then press save, and then share that image. I just wish there was a way of saving as. So in other words, like a, like a file where you save as and it saves it in like a different location because here it's another image. It's not the same image that we just used. It's, it's just a shame that I couldn't use the same image I've taken and when I press save, it kind of saves as or gives me an option. At least not from what I saw, I could be missing something over here or missing a trick. Now, another thing it's worth bearing in mind is you, you press a little information button, it gives you a bit more information about um, uh, the, the picture when it was taken and all that. You've got a little button over here which allows you to generate a report, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, even gives you a latitude point. You can share it and of course, delete it as you normally would expect with uh, a media um, type, type of application. So ultimately over here, all I'm trying to say is that it's very intuitive, very nice to use and the MyFLIR um, app is uh, it's pretty intuitive. And now we get on to performance. What I want to first talk about is CPU, GPU performance and battery life. And then we're going to talk into camera performance and talk about the FLIR app that I just talked about there. And then talk about hardness and to how much will this survive in terms of dropping it and abusing it essentially. Now in terms of core performance or core spec should I say, its CPU is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 that runs at two gigahertz. It's got six gigabytes of RAM. And as I mentioned before, it's also got 128 gigabytes of internal storage. Now what does this translate to? Well, quite frankly, the speeds aren't sensational. You'll see over here from a benchmark that I did on a Geekbench, it's just not got the best um, speeds or shall I say single core or multi-core speeds. Likewise with its GPU with GFX Bench, again, it's not got the best speeds. And when I was comparing this to my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, you can see that the performance is completely through the roof in terms of difference. But let's face it, benchmarks are one thing and comparing it to a phone that's absolutely not comparable to it is kind of silly. In real world scenario, what I will say is yes, the phone isn't gonna be used for gaming, but who's gonna be using this phone for gaming anyway? 
it's perfectly fluid to run through uh, different apps and launch different ones specifically with that amount of RAM that you've got usable. And furthermore, due to its very light Android skin that it's got, or if any, it means that using it is very fluid and I had no issues whatsoever flicking through different menus and opening different apps. Now moving on, something that will be a bit more noticeable to a lot more people rather than the core speed is actually its display. It's a 5.7 inch FHD plus display, so that's 1080 times 2160. Now its display is perfectly vivid and bright. It gets to around 550 nits from memory in terms of my tests. And it also does get pretty dim as well, meaning that if you're in a low light condition, you'll be able to see the phone as well without it being completely like a blinding light in front of you. Now, what I will say, however, is that the, the, the screen itself is actually really good in terms of using it with um, be it gloves or let's say in water. Now, here is something that a lot of its competitors, namely like your normal consumer phones, can't kind of boast about because let's say my S10 Plus with a little bit of water and yes that is also a waterproof phone if I were to use it the screen kind of goes AWOL and you can't use it. When I completely submerged the cat phone and was using it with completely wet hands it would register those inputs and that's extremely important for people who are going to be looking to buy this phone or interested in this phone because essentially that is what you want it to be kind of usable in all type of scenarios and furthermore in that wet and windy kind of um, scenarios you're not going to have any issues when using this uh, phone's um, touchscreen display and yes it's a multi-touch display as you might expect from any modern smartphone. Now one thing I wasn't overly impressed about was actually it's 4000 milliamp battery. From my test that I did, I noticed it ran around 15 to 14 hours of um, test. Now in comparison to my S10 Plus, which is a lot thinner of a phone, it actually lasts around 20 odd hours. So battery life was surprising here. Of course, your mileage may vary if you're going to use the camera function quite a lot, that battery is going to even degrade even further than that. The battery life will last around the days of usage, but don't expect it to be absolutely mind-blowingly long and therefore last for two to three days. You will need a charger, you will need a power bank, but that's the thing I was a little bit disappointed about. Next up is cameras. Now this is really exciting because I really love the fact that I could use the rear thermal imaging camera. Now if you're not interested about thermal imaging, how does the camera perform? Well at the front you've got an 8 megapixel single front facing selfie camera which is perfectly fine and does the job for selfies. While it's its image quality is a little bit off in comparison to let's say the S10 Plus, it is perfectly fine. In terms of the rear camera, I was actually pleasantly surprised. Again, while it shouldn't be compared to an S10 Plus because it's a phone that's completely different in a completely different marketplace, it's worth bearing in mind that the rear camera actually does a decent job. Again, it shouldn't be compared to a consumer phone, but its camera is pretty decent. Image quality is nice, macro shots come out really nice, and the actual overall image tone, it doesn't seem over bloated or over saturated or anything like that. It does a decent job. I did find it in certain scenes where you've got kind of like a dark and white scene, kind of like a contrasting scene, for the camera to slightly um, struggle in some ways. So for example, the foliage of some um, trees with the sky in the background, it kind of struggled with that. But on the whole here, the camera's perfectly fine. Now I should also mention in terms of video recording, it supports up to 4K 30fps recording. Recordings were again perfectly fine, they were not incredible, and image stabilization or video stabilization should I say, was again acceptable. The only thing I was a bit disappointed was the actual overall audio that you could hear. So while I was speaking and filming, what I noticed is that when I took that to the PC and listened to it, my S10 Plus sounded purely clear. Now granted this cat phone has a massive casing around it and therefore it's kind of impacted in terms of its overall audio quality which sounds really muffled and I would say without exaggerating around 300% lower in terms of audio in comparison to my S10 Plus. From there we've got the thermal imaging camera. Now here I love the FLIR 
integration. I showed this before in the app, but also in terms of the actual results that you get, it's actually staggering and really, really impressive as to what you can extract from it. Now, I had just been on a drive. I came back with my BMW E46 M3, and I thought it'd be a great point to actually take some pictures of the car and see where the heat points are from the engine to see if the engine bonnet, if the um, engine was kind of overheating in terms of the bonnet which it shouldn't due to it's got its kind of like thermal protector and even from the wheels and tires and even the brakes themselves you'll be able to see a variety of different images right here and what I love about it is the fact that it allows you to really analyze it now for someone like myself who's into cars I think it's a really cool thing because it allows you to look into cars and see where a heat might be dissipating from. I never knew the center console um, infotainment screen actually is radiating 40 degrees centigrade of heat. I, I really need to look into that because it's pretty much not functional on my car. But it's something that I thought was quite interesting and can be used in a variety of different environments. So yes, I am looking at cars here. I'm looking at engines. So this would be for mechanics or people who are in mechanical engineering of some sort. But if you're in civil engineering and let's say on a construction site, you might want to look at it in terms of looking into pipes. So what I'm trying to say over here is that the, the, the FLIR camera is really useful. And for someone like myself who works as a car journalist, and yes, shout out to Totally EV. If you don't know that I do electric vehicle and hybrid vehicle reviews, be sure to check that out in the description below. I've got my website and YouTube channel, all that good stuff. I love the fact that I can use this as a tool to kind of look at where heat is being dissipated from a car. And that's 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 pretty awesome to me. And finally, we get onto toughness. How strong and how resilient is this smartphone? Well, what I will say is that I put it through the test properly. Now, I dropped it first on carpet and there was no surprise here no scathes or anything like that. But then I took it outside and dropped it onto asphalt. And here, I knew that the phone was going to struggle. By struggle, I mean any other smartphone had I done these tests on would have been completely shattered in 100 bits. No word of a lie, I would never want to drop my smartphone from a 1.88 meter height straight onto its face and expect a non-broken display. That's not the case with this cat smartphone because it survived all those tests, which is pretty insane. Other than its screen protecting getting a little bit damaged, which again, it can be peeled off and being replaced, the, the screen itself was completely intact, totally usable, and incredibly impressive. So to give you an idea, I dropped it from my, uh, my hip height, then dropped it from my head height, which is around 1.8 meters. Dropped it on its um, on its um, screen, dropped it on its back, and dropped it on its side. In other words, every single way you can think of dropping a phone, and even on the side where you might think it's the weakest, this phone perfectly survived. And it really was kind of heart stopping for me because I only have one of these phones, but I really wanted to put it to the test because it's essentially designed for that. And if I don't test it and someone buys this phone and takes it as a recommendation from me that this phone will survive and yet I haven't put it to the test, I would feel not quite just for doing this review. So I can safely say that this phone survived my test and test that I can guarantee you that any consumer phone were to go through these same tests would be shattered in about 10 different bits. From my Galaxy S10 being completely shattered from the front and back to it being completely unusable from its touchscreen display. This cat phone does all of that and did it extremely well. Don't get me wrong, you shouldn't be abusing this fact. You shouldn't be abusing the fact that you've got a kind of shockproof and smashproof kind of thing of a phone you're not supposed to be chucking it on or you're not supposed to be dropping it from a three-story high building. What you should know is just the fact that it is pretty hard as nails and will pretty much survive quite a bit of battering, way more than any consumer phone that I've ever tested or ever known um, because this phone is really built for people in that workplace scenario where they want a phone that they can feel a bit more reassured about. And this all leads me on to my verdict. What do I make about the CAT S62 Pro? Well, quite frankly, there's a lot of good to say about this smartphone. First and foremost is the fact that this phone will survive a beating. It will be able to be dropped on its head, on its side, and survive impacts. In terms of its design, it is a little bit chunky, but very functional given it's got that grippy design, and even at the front, the display will be able to be used with wet fingers. 
At the back, you've got a fingerprint sensor, which means that you can have quick access to your Android smartphone. And in terms of the Android interface, it's not filled with bloatware. Instead, the Android 10 is pretty much clean and bloatware free. It's also going to be upgraded to Android 11, supports enterprise usage as well, and also comes with a two year warranty, which is incredible and great uh, given that the, the smartphone it's used for. Then at the side, you've then got a dual SIM slot or the fact that you can expand the storage from the already large 128 gigabyte or 100 gigabyte of usable storage that you've got there. Then not even talking about the camera, which is actually pretty excellent, not only for as a standalone piece, but specifically for its thermal imaging capabilities and the fact that how well it's integrated within the, within the MyFlir Pro app means that you can customize those thermal images that you've taken after you've actually taken them and give you that custom kind of customization. Truthfully, there's very little that I dislike about it. The processor could be a little bit snappier. There could be a little bit more of a color accurate display. The smartphone's design could be a little bit slimmer and a little bit better thought out, specifically when it comes to that kind of protruding dual um, rear camera. A 3.5 millimeter jack might have been appreciated by some, although I do understand there might be complications with that when it comes to its IP rating. And other than that, its battery life could have been a little bit more extended, whereby it allows for truly two days of full usage rather than being used for basically less than a day if you're going to be using all of its features. So that's my take on the Cat S62 Pro. Let me know in the comments below what you make of it. And of course, let me know if you've got any questions. I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. If you've enjoyed this unbiased, unsponsored, independent review, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to see more, and favor it and share, as it'll always help the channel grow. All right, guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care, and bye-bye.